My name is Esther Wanjiko Kinetia. I'm the founder of Rivers Foods. Rivers Foods is a brand that sells healthy breakfast cereal and uh, the granola bars, which are a snack, uh, a to-go snack you can take in the office, at home, or you can pack for your children to go with them to school. Uh, the idea was born during the COVID time. Being a hotelier, at one point, we stayed home. And so I was like, what do I do with myself if really all this thing goes the way it is going? So I decided to do uh, Ravers Foods. Being that I have an inclination to the healthy eating bit of it, and I love, um, I have seen the mostlies in the market and I felt there's a chance and an opportunity to give a more balanced uh, product. So that is how I jumped into the idea. So slowly we started developing the whole idea and uh, the other baby, the snack, was born along the way. Uh, Ravers Foods, uh, we source our ingredients locally so that we're able to support other small farmers and businesses that we do business with. It is very intentional because we believe that if we support other people, even us, we are going to get more support from those that they consume those other businesses' products. So that is how we settled on where we will be sourcing our items. Our prices are affordable. We have looked into the market. We've tried our best to get the best ingredients and pass them to our clients as a value-added product uh, at the best possible price that we have in the market. I am um, a graduate from Kenya Utali College, food production, and I've also done a marketing, sales and marketing degree with uh, KU. So I really job searched in 2019 after I finished my schooling in 2018, because I felt I needed a different field. I needed to do something different. So I, I was like, I sat one time, now that COVID came, nobody was employing. And people actually, most of the parastatal guys, of course there was no employing completely and that is why I was eyeing. So one time I woke up in the morning and I was like, wait, I think I'm a powerhouse on my own. The fact that I have got the food background, I work in a spa and I've worked in the kitchen and I have the sales degree. So I decided, ha, I think I'm sitting on something I should be uh, making it work. So having the food background and being in the gym and spa gives me that aspect of understanding the health in wholesome in terms of what you eat, how you exercise, the things you need to do in terms of supporting that health. I, I have the whole idea of now, it all adds up. Mm -hmm. It all adds up. So that's how I came up with the, I was like, this mostly uh, will be a good breakfast cereal for somebody who wants to cut weight or maintain weight because it keeps you full for long. It has a lot of fiber, antioxidants, and minerals and vitamins that you will need to keep you going throughout the day. So the beauty of muesli, it doesn't have to be taken with uh, like yogurt and milk or your uh, milk alternative only. You can just snack it in the office, just the way it, it is crunchy and good to go. Another thing we looked into is the, uh, the healthy aspect bit of it in terms of we are not adding sugar to the product. It is refined sugar free, we use honey. We don't use artificial flavors or preservatives in it. We have ensured that even for the orange bar, we use the zest to keep off the artificial flavors and additives. Breakfast is a key meal for everybody. That's why you're told to take your breakfast like a king, take your lunch, a minimal bit of it, and at night you take like your a person part of it. Eh? So you just take a little because breakfast will keep you going throughout the day. If you take a good breakfast meal, you may, you're likely to skip lunch. You're likely to be more productive because you won't keep on looking for something to snack in between the day. I have not been uh, exposed beyond being a hotelier, that's one. Second of it all, sourcing of ingredients was a problem. I have always known the routine of 
going to work, coming back. So I haven't really interacted with this other world of knowing where do you source your raw materials in bulk, in wholesale. So that was a whole new field. It took friends and uh, family to assist me. This is where you will get your raw materials. These are the suppliers. That introduction bit. But uh, it went well. And um, the other challenge was the finances. I had just finished my degree, so the much maybe I would have saved, I had already invested in the education bit. So I didn't have anything I had saved in terms of uh, this money. And even the idea was not there. I didn't have anything to do with business, so I knew my routine, I was comfortable. So something shook me from there, the, the comfort zone, and I had to wake up. I did my market research, that's one. So I had to compare a few brands and see what do they put, what do they have, what is the differentiating factor that we can put in. And um, I also was guided by the CAB's uh, specifications. There's that which they need in terms of the protein, the minimum you need to have, the carbs, the fats, all that. So you need to factor in all that as you. You even uh, bring the ingredients together to ensure that you have a product. Again, you need into, to look into the, ran, the rancidity of the nuts. Um, rancidity is, if things like, like um, peanuts you add into your product, they go rancid very fast, they spoil very fast. That's why you find most Lucy's will have almonds and uh, cashews. They have a longer shelf life than the peanuts. Though again, also preserved well, and if you look into that flatoxin bit, you can add them. But I decided to keep them off and do the almonds and the cashews. There are more benefits in terms of even the nutrients um, in the long run. I remember I was in the Karen organic market. It was a client who referred me to the incubation kitchen I'm in today. So she loved my muesli and she asked me, Esther, where do you do your muesli? I was very honest and I told her, I do it from my kitchen. I have tried to sum up those startup costs. They're not adding up. They're not. I'm looking at them and I'm like, when will I ever break even? And uh, she was like, but I can help you. There's a group of women who came up together. They came up with a kitchen. They had a similar problem. They had the idea it was viable, but they couldn't sell beyond the markets because they couldn't get the certification from their kitchens. So she sent me to a lady by the name Amina, and she asked me, please go see this lady. Um, sit down with her. Let her see whether your idea can sell. Then you will get, she will get to assist you from there. So I organized myself and uh, called Amina and we scheduled for an appointment. I went in, I had seven Muslims. So I had not seen that aspect of who will give you that shelf space for you to sell all that. But again, when I was doing my research, I, I got to realize you can't just go in with one flavor. The market demands that people have got different tastes and preferences. So you've got to factor in that, which I did. And uh, my baby's narrowed to four instead of now seven. I had to get off three of them. Um, the ones which I got off 
was the muesli which was not roasted. Kenyans love taste. They don't want to imagine you're telling them health and there's no taste in it. And purely that one did not have the honey. It, the nuts were raw. So it took, it took months for like a bag to sell in the markets. So clearly that was an indicator it's not working here. The other one was the chia seeds mostly. It was a perfect choice for those people who love um, health and are purely into it. Eh? But the problem is there are people who get problems with shear if they don't soak them overnight. So that is what posed, that is what put an next to it. Because I was like, this one can bring in problems. If you just, and the, you see, you don't roast the shear, so you just put them as raw as they are. So when you put your bowl of muesli and um, you get to eat it, and maybe you're the type that gets to react with shear, if you don't soak them overnight, then there will be a problem there. So I had to get rid of it. Um, those four flavors take uh, into account four different profiles of a client. I have clients who love cranberries. They know the beauty of cranberry. It's full of antioxidants, very good for your hormonal balancing, great for your start for the day, and the berry bit of it, the sweet and sour bit, makes them go wow about it. So we have the chocolate bit, great for the sweet tooth and the children children love something they feel they love chocolate so they want something that they will take and they will feel wow this one this is you so i needed to factor in that bit of the children and the sweet tooth bit so we have the mango and apple uh, which is a swiss that is the original recipe from the the guy who developed muesli fast was from switzerland his name was uh, max milan so he was developing the recipe for his patients um, and he used uh, the oats, apples, um, a bit of um, raisins and some other fruits to just see whether this thing is working. And apparently it, start, it was working so well for his patients and uh, eventually now mostly became popular in Swiss and other parts of the countries and the world started um, adopting it and replicating it and improving it. So that's how we get it to date here. So the, the recipe is originally from Swiss. That's why we honored them and gave them that, um, the name Swiss, because mainly whatever that is inside that is what the owner of the recipe had decided it to be. It's a healthy option for somebody who loves mangoes and apples, a great combination. We use the dried uh, natural mangoes no additives in them, uh, nothing we've added in terms of, we use actually lemon for the apples to just ensure that they don't get oxidized. Then we have the last bit, the tropical. I have clients who, who love trop the tropical bit, the banana and the coconut. So that's a, uh, an option for them. And it also does very well in the market. I have had wonderful shop owners who will tell you, you will give them samples and they get back to you. Others, will, it will be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, till you tell yourself, this one at the right time, the Lord shall make it happen. This one, it is just not the type. It is, I think after the feature with Kayana is when um, I have gotten the confidence again to move out and feel yes. You know, it was a reassurance that yes, this brand is doing something. We, we are here with the, in the market, they're feeling us. So we need to move out and be more aggressive. So we have a few shops that we are waiting to close. Um, that should be by the end of October, we should be stocking in more than 10 shops. Yes. So, but most of them, to Koyo process here, yeah, we're signing the contract, we're almost done. Others are waiting to be stocked. Um, I'm expecting that uh, people will get to buy. Buy not to support ravers only, but buy to support their own health. We really look into the sourcing of our products, where we source our products, and ensure that uh, 
we get them from the very best and the premium shops that we get, we, we those who import and we also monitor how fast their things move so that they don't sell to us things which have overstayed in their stores and that is what we are clearing so we are so specific where we buy and why we buy from those particular people Uh, the fact that um, they give you a platform to interact with other women, learn. We have a books, um, like a books interaction group. So you get to learn from other, um, other entrepreneurs. We meet, we have meetings that uh, we get to meet here. We interact, we get to share. You realize that some of these problems you're into, you're not the only one who is into them. They do trainings, like we had a financial training some time back. So you're able to know how to manage your finances. You're able to know where do you get your financial assistance if you need. And um, what are the terms? What are the do's and don'ts with money? The idea, um, when I went to see Amina, she was like, Esther, I think Give me, actually she was like, you're a chef, bring me a bar and uh, the deal will be sealed. Because in the incubation kitchen, nobody was doing the bars. People kept replicating almost the same thing. You find if it's sauces, you have like three four people doing things, cosmetics, like that. So there's nobody doing the bars and she was like, bring me the bar and the deal is sealed. So. The idea was birthed by Amina initially, but I thought of the flavors now in terms of what do I sell, what is different from whatever that is being offered in the market. And I can tell you for sure it worked. The fact that there is even that bit of recycling makes me more excited because now that one connects us to the environment. What are you recycling? The orange, the orange um, zest. Uh -huh. Yes. So I sourced them from um, uh, like, now when the, 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 there's a hotel I have liased with them, so when they're, they're done with their squeezing of the juice, we put them separately from the other trash. So I'm able to use, remove the zest, return them back, and then they give them out to the pigs. So there's a complete cycle of the waste. So that makes me excited about the bars. The beauty is that again, bars keeps you full for a longer time. They're healthy. We've said we don't use any preservatives, no refined sugar in them. So it gives you that healthy bite that you can always keep in your bag and you don't have to take the whole of it, just a bit of it. It will keep you going for the day. Five years from now, I see Rivers uh, having moved not only from Nairobi, but we will have been able to supply the, uh, the cereal throughout the country. And also we will look into options of moving it to East Africa. It's a great product and I believe we should sell. And we sell health across the East, of East Africa. Um, I would want to encourage them and tell them, if you have an idea, you've researched, you've seen that it is viable, please go for it. Uh, God will give you a destiny connectors. I believe in destiny connectors and that will happen. I have walked the journey and I know I didn't have everything, but I dared to do it. People in business know business is not for the faint hearted. So keep doing what you're doing. Hope that tomorrow will be better and for sure we, we will keep building this country despite all the challenges that they are there and um, yeah, it will happen. To reach us for direct purchases or if you have any inquiries about the brand, our social media handles are at Ravers Foods on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and Threads. Uh, we also, you can also reach us on, web, on our website www.healthyraversfoods.com You can email us on info at healthyraversfoods.com And our number is uh, 0711-493-9921